Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel DS Tech Mirror. Topic for today video is how to add bulk row to Excel using Graph API and this is the most fastest and most efficient method in Power Automate. This is the third video in the series where I am covering how to add rows to Excel using multiple approaches. In my first video I cover how to export data to Excel from Power Apps in CSV format. In my second video, I export the data from SharePoint to Excel in XLSX format using add a row to a table action and we saw what was the challenge with that particular action. It was very slow even for 40 rows and one column it was taking more than a minute. So in this video, in today's video, I will cover how to add bulk rows where we will be adding large number of data with multiple columns to an Excel. Data source, I will be getting the data from a SharePoint list which is having more than 35,000 rows. So let's quickly get started. So friends, this is my solution and here I will be creating a new Power Automate from scratch and I will be using manual trigger. I will name my flow as add row to table or add row to Excel fast method hyphen demo manual trigger i will click on create and this is my sharepoint list database from here i will be fetching the data and if i go to list settings from here you could see here i have more than 35000 rows total number of items is 36634 so i will be trying to get uh, you know large number of data from this particular list let's see with how many rows we will try now uh, flow is ready so let's quickly add the next step if you are following my video if, or if you have followed my last two videos so you know our next action would be get item from sharepoint list so i'll say get items site address this is a poc site so here is my site poc list name is database now first of all top count i will keep as 40 because in my last video i also you know select the 40 rows and let's see i'll how much it will get optimized last time it was uh, you know taking more than a minute so let's see today initially i will go with 40 rows one column we will compare and then again i'll try to increase the row count and as well as column and then we will see okay get item is done now let's quickly create a file i'll say create file this would be the create file action after this and before that what i have to do is once i have the data ready i will put it in a select section because i want an array so i'll say data operation and here i will select from here i have to select get items value list of items so i got the value and for now what i will do i'll move over here okay and here i need an array and inside this array what I will do, I will select which column I want. So I want policy ID. Let me type. Yes. So, guys, now I have got the policy ID. This is my data. Okay. Create file. I will again create it in the root path. This is done. File name to get the unique name every time. I will use this function called GWT. Okay, and I will not forget to put an extension XLSX. This is done. File content initially, I do not have any content, so I will put a blank space. I will type space bar. That's it. So this is done. Now, what is, what is the next step? I have to create a table into this file. So I'll say create table because only then I will be able to add data. I'll go to Excel Online Business. I'll say uh, create table. This is also fine. Location, it could be OneDrive. Location will be OneDrive. Document library again OneDrive. File I will get from my previous section create file and ID because here uh, I have to pass the ID of the file. So I'll say ID, the unique identifier of the file or folder. Table range as of now there is only one column so i'll say dollar a1 that's it 
table name. So table name I will give sample data. Okay. And column name I have to give the column name as well. So I will give policy ID. So my header is ready. My this will create the table. Now I have to add data to a table. So now the change uh, main change over here would be in my last video I used an action add row to a table. This one. If you are watching this video directly for that I am just showing you I use this section and it has got some performance issue. So to overcome that today I will be using graph API for that I will be using HTTP connector. So send an HTTP request. Now I need the API method would be post body from where I will get the body from the select how I will double quotes sorry parenthesis and here value and what I have to do is here is colon after this I have to pass body of select so I will use expression body of select done so this is my expression body of select which is this one so now what is left is this URI so over here if you will see I will share this link also of the graph API in the description box below. You can find it over here. I will share this expression as well in the description box below as well as this URI. Everything I will share so you can just copy paste and you can try it at your end. Just to give you an overview. This is where you know I am getting all the APIs to add data to a table or to an Excel through graph API and this is related to the OneDrive. So from here I have got it. Now I will go over here. Now over here because this is working with the graph API and this is a manual trigger. So when I will click on the flow, all these actions will run through my credentials and definitely I would be having an access on my OneDrive. That's why we do not need any additional step for authentication and authorization. If you are putting your creating your file in a SharePoint, which would be a, you know, centralized space. So for that to access a file through graph API to write data to it for a post operation we would be needing an extra step for authentication and authorization which I will cover in my separate video it is the outside the scope of today's video today we are restricting to OneDrive now I'll go to the this URI which I have kept it in my notepad I'll open my notepad in the interest of time I've just copied it here and this is my API now now if you see this if first of all I'll go to this API me drive now item we have to pass the item okay item ID workbook table table name rows and add so we need table name and this item ID or path whatever okay so from where we will get this tool so table name from here I can you know hard code also or otherwise if I remove this if I go to this expression over here you will get this table name create table table name this is my table name okay and sorry i put it at the wrong place rows here i have to put table name let me just cross check i'm not missing anything fine and here i have to put the table name after tables and now i need this item id from where i will get the item id i'm getting from this create file action this is one of the i would say it is present in the body for now I will directly I am directly copying this action and I will show you how I am getting it at a later point just now because this I will be getting it from the run instance hmm. so or or I will do one thing first let me run this flow okay this much I will remove this action okay for now and I will save this flow and we will see how we are getting the file id so I will click on continue and just one thing to notice all these actions please see they are running with my credentials only OneDrive so that's why it can access my OneDrive without any special step for authentication or authorization I'll click on continue run flow and create file is done let's wait for create table and that is also done now just open this create file okay and here you can see this ID okay and now if you see this ID, this ID after this full stop, whatever the remaining part is, this is the, this is actually the file or this is actually the item ID we need. So we will be fetching this ID from the output. Okay. 
and then we will be splitting it with this uh, dot operator or full stop and then we will getting the first item or second item in the array. So this is what we have to do uh, by, by using the compose action or by using this power automate expression we can easily do this. So we have to get this ID. So I just switched this uh, flow to the new designer. Here I will write one compose action. Okay. So this is the compose. And now in the compose, if I go to the expression, so now we know, so this is the expression which will work. I will copy this expression from here. You can find this expression in the description box below and I will paste it over here. So what I have done, output of create file, body slash id, then I split it using this dot. So this is done. This will give me the id of my file. So this is done. Now I can go back and again add the HTTP operator, which is the graph. API one. So HTTP send an HTTP request. Let's do it quickly. We have the URI I've already explained. So this time I'll simply copy paste from here and I will just replace this output from here. I'll say output of compose. This is done and table one instead of table one. What I will say I will use table name. I will find body slash name table name. Method would be host because you have to update the table. And I will say advanced operator show all. So I will get the body. Over here, what I have to do, I will use parenthesis. Inside that, I will put value and body of select. I will go to expression body of select. I will pass. So this is fine that over here I have missed this slash and over here this would be values so there were these two misses create table and here what i will do is no http request body name table and i'll say body title so now till now three mistakes we are able to find out i have missed one slash over here this has to be values and body title we have to pass instead of body id so now it should work okay now let's see it should work now manually publish and test okay we have got an error now it's saying resource not found for the segment table sample data oh, my bad i think again i missed that particular slash yes i missed this slash this is a typo so now i'll click on test manually publish and test run flow done it should work now hopefully Yes, and now the main thing it just took 0 0.9 seconds for 40 rows where our add row to our table action was taking more than a minute, it is taking even less than a second. And now let's see what will happen if I'll increase the count over here. Now I will work with 500 rows. Okay, I'll work with three columns policy ID. After that, let's see what all. Uh, properties we have I will use state code whatever we have I will use if there is any other thing sequence number I will add these three okay and over here I will add policy ID what was I think state state code and sequence number okay here I will add the header policy ID state code and important things we have to change our table range as well there are three columns so a b and c dollar c1 that's it so now we are getting 500 items save draft and test this i'll go automatically recently use trigger or rest on here. let's go to manually publish and test in my previous video i didn't even give it a try for 500 items because it could have taken a, a longer time and here it took five uh, you know one second for 500 rows now let's see first of all let's see this particular file what i'll do i'll go to my onedrive let's see this file i'll go to onedrive my files i'll click on this file and here because sequence number is you know if you will see this particular table also here it is blank that's why and you will see this thing how many rows are there there are 500 rows so guys you see the efficiency of this graph API. So whenever you are dealing with bulk rows, if you want to do export, you can, you know, work with 
graph api send an http request so i'll just reiterate for you how you can do that trigger a flow get items over here this is a change you have to create an array over here i'll just edit it you have to create an array like this okay then create file simple compose action in compose action i want to get the file id where is the file id it is present in the body so what i have done i have used this split output of create file body id split it by uh, dot and i want the first uh, second item in the array then create table simple and http request over here make sure you are not missing any slashes make sure you used body title not body id for the table name to get the table name and here in the body its parenthesis double quotes values and output is body of select all these things you will find in the description box below you can directly copy and use it in your flow if you are facing any issue please reach out to me uh, through comments or my official email id guys thank you for watching today's video if you like this video please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel to get notification for our upcoming videos if you have any issues with this video or any for previous video please reach out to us through comments or through our official email id or you can reach out to me on twitter as well till then much love keep learning thank you